Hello and welcome back to Lady Dynamite Creates. This is Tiffany and today I have another collab video for you guys. This time I will be creating a bug theme girl along with all of my doll friends, Enchantarium, I Could Do That DIY, Jackie O, Josephine's Creatures, and Creepy Kitty Creations. Be sure you check out all of the wonderful dolls created by my collab partners. Their channels are linked in the description box below. Now let's jump over to my mood board. I decided I wanted to make a Witch Doctor lightning bug, and being from the South, lightning bugs are a large part of my childhood. So of course it was one of the first bugs I thought of. I did a quick sketch to concept out some of the body sculpting that I wanted to achieve, and as far as clothing goes, I knew I wanted to keep it very minimalistic. After all, I want to show off all that sculpting. I've referenced Lightning Cosplay's Witch Doctor as well as the Witch Doctor from Diablo 3 as far as clothing is concerned. I wanted lots of earth tones and natural textures as well as a few pops of color here and there. I also plan to have a Firefly's most iconic feature, a light up butt. Now that I have a direction set, I can start creating. For my base doll, I've decided to use a Draculaura. To get her prepped, I'm going to be removing her head as well as all of her hair and factory paint. And with a little editing magic, it's all done. I know Draculaura may seem like an odd choice to use, but a Firefly's exoskeleton is typically red, yellow, brown, and black. I'm going to have a lot of brown in her clothing, and her butt's going to be the yellow. I really didn't want to use something as bold as the red, so I figured I was going to pare that back a bit to a lighter pink. With her scalp painted, I'm now going to prep some yarn for her hair. I've taken a long section of this chunky yarn, and I'm first just unraveling all of the strands. Once they're completely unraveled, I'm going to take the ends and gently grasp and pull the fibers loose from the plies of yarn. This is basically just the inverse of how they spin yarn to create it. With my fibers ready for the hair, I can begin to plug in the hairline. I'm plugging just the outer perimeter and I'm going to lay in wefts later. I tend to overroot when I'm using yarn and laying in wefts keeps me from getting way too floofy. Even though I was using this variegated gray yarn, it didn't give me the highlights of color that I was hoping for, so I did add in a few white spots here and there. Using some liquid fusion glue, I secure all of the hair plugs in place. Now to create those filler wefts. I have my ceramic tile and I'm running a line of Elmer's glue all directly down the middle. Now I add in sections of yarn a little bit at a time and I'm making sure to plop the middle of the strand into the glue. I don't need especially long wefts because I'm going for a shorter haircut, so this makes two in one. When the glue's had a chance to dry, I pull the wefts off of the tile and then I trim away the excess. Now time to get her body prepped for the sculpting. I use the flat edge of my X-Acto blade and I scrape it down all of her seams just to clean those up a bit. We wanna make sure that they're as seamless as possible. I use my rotary tool to help remove her sculpted on underwear and I give her a good sanding all over her body. This removes the shiny surface and will help the epoxy adhere to the plastic. Now a few words about this video's sponsor, Xtool. Xtool is releasing the world's first handheld dual laser engraving machine, featuring a 10 watt blue laser and a 2 watt infrared laser. This machine is faster than you can imagine and can engrave over 300 kinds of materials. The crowdfunding price will be different in different months, but right now you can enjoy the best discount and save $500 when you buy the Xtool F1 before November 30th. When you buy now, you get shipped first and shipping will start at the end of March. Check out the links in the description box below for more information. Now onto the sculpting. I'm using epoxy sculpt and I'm mixing up equal parts of A and B. While I'm mixing it, I'm making sure to use my gloves. However, once I start working with it, I am going to be taking them off. I'm not recommending that you do this. This is just what I do. And if you are going to be working with epoxy sculpt, I highly recommend reading the manufacturer's labels. While I'm sculpting with the clay, I'm using my hands as well as tools and anything else that I think that might actually come in handy and help. Very professional, I know. I find that using water is very helpful. I use it when I'm smoothing out the clay so that the plastic to clay transitions, it's much smoother. The smoother I get it here, the less sanding I have in the end. I also find that if I wet the surface first and then apply clay to it, I have a little bit better adhesion. The water just makes the clay extra sticky, at least when it's at this state. 
I'm pretty much just following along with the details that I've sketched out in my concept drawing and making changes here and there where I find things don't work well on doll scale. A big thanks to my supporters over on Patreon, Oak Magpie, Bex Mini Studio, Donna Magana, Stormcrow Studios, Kitsy, Camille, Jennifer Medina, Dollicious, Angelica, Angel Book Walter, Amber S., Thurry, Deborah Sweeney, B. Burnett. If you're interested in being one of my patrons, please check out the link in the description box below. I always appreciate all of your support. For her hands, I thought it would be fun to make them look a little bit more foreign, so instead of having her five fingers, I'm going to click off her middle finger and her pinky finger and have her just have two fingers and a thumb. I sculpt these so that they're a little bit triangular in shape and segmented. I also sculpt in multiple passes. I find that if I try to sculpt too much at once, I wind up just smushing an area I've already sculpted and have to start over. After everything had fully cured, I did give this a lot of sanding. No matter how much smoothing I try to do in the sculpting phase, there's still a lot of sanding to do. I am going to save you from the monotony of watching me do more sanding and just skip ahead this time. Now let's get started on her big old booty. I've designed this so that it'll fit snugly up against her back and I've designed it into two parts. There's the top part that's going to hide all of her electronics, then the bottom portion that's going to be translucent so that it can light up. I've hollowed these out so that they have room for the lights and batteries. I also made sure to make room for some magnets so that I can make the clear part detachable so that you still have access to adjust the light as well as turn it on and off and replace the battery. With my model finalized, I can start getting it printed. I'm printing this on my Elegoo Mars 3 and I've mixed up a custom clear resin. I'm using some resin dyes to tint this translucent resin into a yellowish green color. Here it is fresh off the print bed and the translucent resin has a very cool effect. And of course, me and clear resin don't always get along so it did take a few tries to get this one right. You can see on this particular print that the removal of the supports left some pretty bad pitting on it and I did think that I could salvage it by just giving it a nice sanding, however it didn't work out and I did have to, to reprint this one. I do want to make sure there's absolutely no light leakage around the scene here, so I am going to apply a little bit of epoxy sculpt to this area and squish these two pieces together. I've wrapped the clear portion with some plastic wrap to help protect it while I'm working with the clay. I'm just making sure to close up this slight gap that's here. Now to get the magnets in to hold the butt pieces together. I dollop a bit of paint on one side of the butt and then I place the two pieces together. This transfers the dot to both sides so I know exactly where to drill in for the magnets. I use my Dremel to drill the holes out and I'm making sure that the bit I'm using is the exact same diameter as my magnets. I make sure not to go too deep because if I go too deep the magnet will sit too far in and they won't connect and have a good hold. I use super glue to secure the magnets. Time for some electronics. Since I wanted my LED to blink and I barely understand circuits as it is, I decided to order a pre-made kit from Evan Designs and I highly recommend them, especially if you're unsure about voltage, resistors, or whatever else you need to add. 
The kit was fantastic and all I needed to do was apply heat shrink tubing and connect the right wires. Easy peasy. The circuit's now done and we have a really cool flashing light. So when I designed my bug butt, I was thinking about a way of just hiding the wires. I wasn't thinking about a way to actually hold the battery pack. Now I'm gonna make a bit of a ledge inside the top half of the butt using a bit of thermoplastic. I really wish I would've thought about this ahead of time because I could've just created a small little ledge in there when I was modeling it, but hindsight, you never know these things until you get into the thick of it sometimes. With my ledge made, I can now add the battery and the wires into the housing, and I can make sure to keep the light and the switch on the outside so that they have easier access and can be seen. Now to attach the bug butt to the doll. I've drilled holes in both pieces so that when connected they match up, and I'm going to put tubing down in one side first. I'm just gluing this in place. I used two-part epoxy glue for a more secure hold. Once the glue's had a chance to cure, I'm going to address that seam, and I'm using some epoxy clay to smooth out that transition. Now onto the wing making. I printed a wing design onto some transparency film and then I'm going to glue down a section of wire. I've shaped this wire to be the same curvature as the top of the wing. I'm using gem tack glue to secure it in place because it's a clear drying glue and will be less noticeable on the final product. When the glue is dry, I trim away any of the excess transparency film. The last time I made wings this way, I was unhappy with how thin the wings felt, so this time I'm going to thicken them up. I'm going to dip these down into some clear UV resin. I quickly set this under a UV light and cure it so that it doesn't create runs, but I didn't show this because it was a hot mess. Once I have my resin fully cured, I can now start adding in my texture with my diamond glaze. I apply this to sections and try to keep it away from the veining. I do this to both the front and the back of the wings, but I do need to wait for the front to dry before I can do the back. Once the diamond glaze has had a chance to dry, I can now trim the excess wire and I twist the bottoms together and the wings are finished. I love how the wings came out and the glass-like effect that the resin gave it is just perfect. For the attachment on the back, I'm first going to drill a little rectangle in here. I've had problems in the past with my wings turning left and right, so I figured if I went with something that was a little bit more rectangle, it would keep them in place better. I drill the hole with my Dremel, but because the chest cavity is so hollow, I need to stuff it full of some tin foil so that when I place my metal tubing through, it has a place to rest on and it doesn't get pushed all the way in. I apply a bit of glue to the inside of the hole and then I slide my metal piece in. When the tube is in place, I can finally address the imperfectness of my dremeled out area. I use epoxy sculpt to clean up right around the hole. Now let's make some clothes for her. My design for her top is a strappy wrapped halter. I'm using this faux suede, and to give a natural edge, I'm giving a little snip and then just ripping strips out of the fabric. I cut it to length and add a Velcro closure. I fit this onto my mannequin and slide on a brass ring. I plan to sew on some drape beading, but I needed this fitted onto the doll first so that I can make sure that they hang correctly when I'm sewing them on. Thank you. 
And here's the finished top after I finished sewing on both rows of beads. For her loincloth, I've used the same faux suede fabric and I've cut it in a tattered shape. I heat up an awl and melt tiny holes all over the bottom edge. Here's how it looks after it's been distressed. I hot glue on a leather strip for the waistband. I sew on a couple of strands of wooden and stone beads. I work on adding different textiles to give it a layered effect, and once I'm happy with the results, I add a velcro closure and the loincloth is done. Here's the finished loincloth. I really like how it looks like she made her clothing out of the things that she found. For her accessories, I have a few things planned. The first thing I'm going to be making is a headdress. I've 3D printed a headband with a skull on top to use as the base. I get started on the paint job by giving the skull a base of white paint. I give it a wash of burnt sienna and wipe away the excess. I do wind up having to darker some of the deeper crevices. Off camera, I wrapped up the visible portions of the headband with some strips of the faux suede. I begin decorating her headdress with some stones, moss, and some sea glass. After I got these things on, I felt like the stones were a bit bare, so I'm sketching on some runic symbols with a watercolor pencil, and then going over that and painting it with some acrylic paint. Off camera, I added a few strands of beading, and then her headdress is finished. I modeled her staff in 3D and I made it look like there were several vines or sticks that had grown together and twirled as it was growing to form this hook shape. It was a little taller than my print capacity so I did have to separate these into two pieces. I've left some registration mark holes so that I know where to drill to line these up correctly. I glue a small rod into place to strengthen that joint. Now I can get started on painting it. I'm going to start out with a medium brown color and then I'm going to do a wash of dark brown. I follow it up with some dry brushing of lighter colors on top of that. I do make sure that each of these layers is dry before I move on to the next. Once I'm finished, I seal it off with some matte varnish. You may have noticed there is still a seam where those two pieces are connected, so to hide this, I'm going to be wrapping up the staff a bit in a few areas with some of that same faux suede. I decorate the staff just like I did with the headdress, and I'm filling it in with bits of moss and stones just all over the place. For her lantern, I found this jewelry charm at the craft store and I thought it would be the perfect addition to her staff. I fill it up with a bit of UV resin and I mix in these glow-in-the-dark pebbles. I set it under the UV light for a few seconds at a time and each time I pull it out, I stir it up so that the pebbles don't settle on the bottom. I 
I can now attach the lantern to the staff and I just wrap those cords around and hot glue them in place. Here's our final staff and I'm very happy with it. It's exactly what I think a witch doctor from the swamps would carry. Her final accessory is something I actually didn't think about her needing until pretty late in the project. Because of her big old butt, she can't sit in a staddle and the butt gets in the way of a under the arm stand as well, so I needed to make her a special stand. I made a custom armature, then my wonderful, wonderful husband made me a base out of walnut. Of course, I couldn't resist busting out the laser engraver and adding my logo to it. Again, a big thank you to Xtool for sending me this M1 laser engraver for trying out. Here's the final stand after staining, and the wire armature will still be able to pop in and out so that it's able to be shipped easier. Now it's finally face up time, and here is all the products that I've used on her face up, but if you are interested, a more detailed list is available in the description box. I've prepped her face with three layers of Mr. Super Clear, and I wait about 30 minutes in between each layer before spraying the next one. I spray outside and wearing a respirator mask. Once the final layer is cured, I get started on the face up. I start my face up the same way I always do, and I start defining her eye shape. I feel like once I have this feature down, it's a lot easier for me to know where I need to shade. Now that I'm happy with her overall eye shape, I can begin to add her pupils and iris placement, and then block in the colors. I begin shading and contouring out her face, and I'm starting with shades of browns, but I also add in some purples and blues in there too. I feel like these colors work really well with Draculaura's coloring. I add some blushing to her cheeks, and I wind up pulling this all the way up to around her temples. Next, I begin to highlight some high points on her face with some white pastel. This Draculaura had a few small spots of staining on her vinyl, but to camouflage this, I decided to give her a few freckles. I splatter some thinned out watercolor paint all over her face, and then I use a cloth to pull away any of the excess. One of the big features that I wanted this doll to have was a cataract appearance to her eyes so that they appear blind. Typically when you see this in real life, it's a clouding to the lens, but you can still detect the colors underneath. So to get this effect, I'm dotting some white pastel onto her irises. I fill in her lip color with some brown pastel and then I begin to add in some detail lines. I do more shading around her eyes and I start bringing in more color as well. After that, I seal and get started on layer two. I start this layer out by tackling her eyebrows. I sketch in a rough shape with my pastels and then I refine that further with my eraser. I do another pass at building up color on her eyes. Most of the things that I do on layer two are just intensifying what I did on layer one with a few exceptions like adding the eyebrows. I do a few highlights with my watercolor pencil, and these are going to be sharper highlights than when I use the pastel. I also do just the opposite with my brown watercolor pencil and add in some more intense areas of shadow. I add some shading from the eyelid with some pastel, and then I whiten up her irises once again. With a black watercolor pencil, I began to add individual hairs to her eyebrows, and I have to say, these are probably my favorite eyebrows I've ever done. I felt like they just looked really nice. 
But that was it for layer two. I seal and get started on layer three. I start layer three by giving her eyes a few more details. I use a very sharp watercolor pencil and sketch in her eyelashes both on the bottom and the top. I have found that the freer I am with this, the better looking my lashes are, that if I try to be too controlled and precise that they look like garbage. I do another pass of white pastel over her irises. I really want to make sure that color is very muted. I seal and start on layer four, and this time I actually sealed her three more times again because this was something I was unsure about. I wanted to give her some white face paint on her face, but I was really worried that it wouldn't work out and look well, so I wanted to make sure that if it looked like trash, I could erase it. I didn't want to destroy my previous hard work with an experiment gone wrong, so I wanted to be very safe. When I got the white as opaque as I could get it with the watercolor pencils, I did seal and do one more layer. Now I can finally add in her catch lights as well as the highlights to her waterline. Finally her face up's done and I'm really glad that I took the chance on the white face paint because I feel like it really makes this character. I seal her with three final layers of Mr. Super Clear to help protect that face up. Now let's address that hair because right now she kind of looks like a monk. I glue row after row of wefts in place using hot glue because I'm too impatient to wait on glue to dry. Now time to get it trimmed because right now it's way too long. I take and pull the hair back and run a razor down it to remove the length that I don't need. This helps create a natural taper to the hair and I won't have such a blunt cut. Once I have the hair cut to length, I chop away with my thinning shears to reduce the bulk. Now it's time to make the body match the head. The first thing I need to do is make sure all of these pieces match color-wise. Draculaura has this pink skin tone, but I've got the gray epoxy sculpt as well as a different color gray of the 3D print. I've mixed up a custom color of paint that's very close to Draculaura's skin tone, and I begin applying that to even out her coloring. I seal the paint in with a couple of coats of Liquitex matte varnish. I give the body three coats of Mr. Super Clear, and then I can begin doing some shading with pastels and pencils. I've used the same colors that I've used to blush her face with because I want to make sure these match. I'm not going to show blushing the body completely, but if you are interested in seeing a full length video, there's one available over on my Patreon page. Just check the link in the description box. Now to make her some antennas. I'm trying out a new to me product called Cosplay Doll. I'd heard lots of good things about this, so I wanted to give it a try. It's a clay, but once it's baked, it turns into a plastic, but it does retain its flexibility. I'm using two pieces of jewelry wire as the under armature so that I have something to plunge down into the head to hold these in place. I sculpt the clay directly on these wires. I bake them according to the package directions once I'm done sculpting. Here's the antennas right after I've just finished sculpting them. And here's the antennas right after baking. And you can see there's no color distortion from the oven. And the biggest thing is they are still flexible and the pieces don't crack and break away once they're bent. It takes paint very well and I've gotten these based out and I'm just using acrylic paints to shade them. To prepare the head for the antennae, I'm taking a needle that's about the same gauge as the thickness of the wire and I'm heating it up and I plunge it down into the head. This leaves behind a nice hole for those antennae to go into. After this, I pop the head back onto the body and once I had the head in place, I felt like something was missing. 
The face has the white markings that also follows up into the headdress, but there was a lack of this on the body. So I'm going to bring this down and I've sketched it on in watercolor pencil, and then I go in with my acrylics to finalize the design. And finally, we're all finished. And you'll remember this is where we started. And this is where we ended up. I wanted to thank you all so much for watching and sticking with me till the end here. And I want to know, if you were going to create a bug girl, what kind would it be? Comment down below with your answer. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. If you haven't done so already, make sure you head over to my collab partner's videos and give them a watch. Everyone did such an amazing job. I wanted to say thank you to my collab partners. I had a lot of fun working on this project with you guys. And thanks to Nick at I Can Do That DIY for hosting. Odette is unfortunately no longer available. One of my Patreon supporters, Shannon, aka Delicious, took advantage of the Patreon exclusive first offering in 10% discount and adopted her first. I do have a few other dolls still available on my Etsy shop if you're interested in my work. I'll see you in my next video. Remember, always be creating.